Hi quilters, I'm Katrina from Sunshower Quilts, and today's tutorial is on the AccuQuilt Go Bountiful Baskets die, specifically focusing on that pesky little handle. So first you want to mark your die. I use a silver sharpie to mark mine because the lines really, really show up. So you don't want to just outline where the die cuts are. I like to mark a quarter inch outside as well, plus I like to mark on it this is the background and this is the basket so that it's, I don't get confused. Also, I like to mark the start shapes on them. The basket can be made out of a charm pack or a five inch square, but it will actually work from a four and three quarter inch uh, square as well. So if you're cutting yardage, it's a little bit more efficient. Um, the background starts off at a four and a half by six and a quarter uh, rectangle. So I like to mark that on there so that I don't have to remember it. It's all on the die. Okay, first thing you're going to do um, is you're going to cut out your pieces according to the shape. So this is my background cut and this is what the basket looks like when it's cut. But in addition to that, you are also going to cut out um, a triangle for every basket of tearaway stabilizer. I've used a heavyweight here simply because I have a really big roll of this kind of stabilizer, but you can definitely use a lightweight. Um, this is going to make or break your block. So here's my tearaway stabilizer. This piece right here, this weird shaped piece, is actually your handle. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that to your ironing board and you're just going to press it in half so that it looks something like that. Okay. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab the pattern that came with this, the Alex Anderson's Bountiful Basket pattern, because you need this handle placement guide. I have made one out of um, just a clear plastic and marked the center of this. Okay, so that's my handle template guide. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your background squares and one of your pieces of stabilizer. The first thing they tell you in the pattern to do is to stay stitch that bias edge of this triangle. So, while you're stay stitching that, you're just going to stay stitch um, <clears throat> your background fabric to your stabilizer. I just used, you can't really see it because I used white, but I used um, of my longest stitch length and about an eighth of an inch in. That's just so that it holds on, okay, so that you don't have to worry about it. Once you've done that, we need to put your handle placement line on. So you're just going to give your fabric a little fold like that. I just did it with my hands. Take your handle template now and set that on, but can you see this? This I found that if I lined the edge of the template up with the edge of the fabric that I really didn't like where the handle went. So I found that if I slid it back, just an eighth of an inch back, just a little bit, that I got a much nicer handle. So all I'm gonna do is slide that back just a teeny tiny bit, and I've got my, um, fabric pencil here and I'm just going to mark lightly where the template where my handle placement goes. Next I'm going to grab my handle and you want this side up. You don't want to be marking with that side up. You want to start with this. Now you want to roughly line the edge of the handle up like that. Can you see it's just 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 the raw edge is just on the inside of your drawn line. Next, I'm going to take my very, very fine silk pins and I'm going to pin. Make sure you're going straight up and down. Pin one here, rotate that around, and put another pin in there. Pin and pin. Just make sure that you're budging up just with the inside of that line and pin. Continue to pin to the top until you get something that looks like that. <laughs> so the handle, the raw edge is lined up with your drawn line and lots and lots of their silk pins. Next step is the sewing. So I'll be right back at my sewing machine. Uh, in the instructions to the Bountiful Basket Pattern by Alex Anderson, she says to use a scant quarter inch seam. I found that the uh, a quarter inch seam uh, 
took too much of a bite out of the fabric, even a scant one. So what I did was I decreased my stitch, uh, my seam allowance to just about an eighth of an inch. And on my sewing machine, it has a nice red line right there um, on my from my Fox sewing machine, my OA foot, that I found was just about absolutely perfect. So I'm going to start uh, sewing just a little bit off of the block on the uh, on the basket handle. Now, just to remind you, we have the tearaway stabilizer behind there, also the fabric and the basket handle. That tearaway stabilizer stabilizes this fabric so well so that the sewing around is much, much easier with the stabilizer there. So, I'm just going to start, and I've got needle down selected, and I'm going to start to sew right about an eighth of an inch in. Okay, I'm just going slowly and pivoting around these curves. this stage you're just going to pull these pins out and we're going to now go to the ironing board to press this out. Okay, next step is pressing the handle out. Now I have some very specific ways to do this. You can see it's already popping up just beautifully because I did such a small little seam allowance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my iron and if you can use one of your little irons if you want to as well. And I'm just going to press over one side, press over the other side, now from here, I'm just going to go on in and pop that handle right over and give it a good press. This is a very hot iron. And you can see, now sometimes the handle likes to splay out a little bit. That kind of bothers me a little bit. So I like to take the basket handle like this, holding onto those little dog ears, and press it down with the iron and give a little pull, holding onto those. And you can see that by holding on to them and pressing down, that it kind of pulls them in a little bit, which gives it a nicer feel. Next, you're going to take your Mary Ellen's Best Press. This is the best starch. Give it a nice shot of starch. Press down. And you have a perfect little basket handle. Now so now that that handle's done, um, if you're going to, uh, if you're machine appliqueing, you're going to do it now. If you want to hand applique the, it down later, you can. I tend to do them after the block is completely finished. Now you just need to assemble the block. This is easy. This is now the finicky part's done. So this is your basket body. All that you're going to do is machine sew a quarter inch down this way, and these footers. Make sure that you got them turned the right way get sewn a quarter inch down there and they'll look something like these right here. So after um, you have machine sewn this at a quarter inch you will uh, be able to just remove the stay stitching here and you can pull that tearaway stabilizer right off. I like to do that after this seam is sewn though so that all your bias is covered and it, it won't stretch out as, at all. So you sew, you simply sew your basket body together, your footers on, and last but not least, you add that last little triangle on, and you can see I still haven't done my hand applique on this one. This is a great little um, carryable project. So, well, I hope you've enjoyed my little basket tutorial, and I hope that you'll try making some baskets. This is a free placemat pattern that's on my blog, sunshowerquilts.blogspot.com. So just remember, use that stabilizer, lots of silk pins, and decrease that seam allowance to an eighth of an inch, and you'll do great. Thanks for watching. Happy quilting.